All right, we're going to cover chapter two, and we're going to talk a little bit about algorithms, pseudocode, flowchart design. All right, a pseudocode that calculates the area of a rectangle. Let's just, how would you calculate the area of a rectangle? Length times width, right? Pretty, pretty simple mathematical formula, right? But if you're writing the pseudocode, you have to ask the user what is the width, or in this case, what is the length? Then you're going to input the length. The user will input the length, and you'll read it in. Then you ask them the width. They'll enter a width. It'll calculate it, and then it will send out the response. This is the area of this uh, rectangle is area. <coughs> All right. Um, is there any questions on that. Pretty straightforward on how to write pseudocode, right? When I'm saying write it in English, you don't have to use print. Just say output or input. That tells me whether you're outputting something or you're inputting it. If you type pr or if you write print, you're telling me you're displaying it, okay? So, why do we use the plus here? It's what we call a concatenation. So we're taking a string that we have in quotes. It's going to print that string. And if you hit plus and then write a variable name, it will print that ver the value of that variable. <coughs> okay, That's what concatenation is, and you'll start to work on it a little bit more. So with the first print, what we'll see is inner length colon. And it's just sitting there, cursor's blinking, waiting for a user interaction. Okay. Then we're going to be printing order in sequential method. Step-by-step, step, right? Sequential. Keyword, sequential. And once you get the enter the length, then you enter the width, and you read those in, then we, uh, and this is where you read it in, is the input statement. It'll be your standard input. We're reading in a variable and assigning it to the value of length. Okay? So the variable name is what? length. Okay, now that we have that, the user inputs 5. So the length is 5. We'll do the exact same thing. If I said print enter a width, what would it what would be displayed? Enter a width. What else? Colon, right? Enter a width colon. Just everything that's inside those quotes is going to be displayed. If we're going to input width, what's going to happen? Right. Pretty simple, right? Mm -hmm. What about area? Why do we have this little funky ar arrow there? What does that stand for? We're storing the value of length times width inside the area variable. You don't have to do the arrow. You can do an equal sign. It works just the same. Does that make sense? This is what we call an assignment statement because we're assigning that mathematical function's value to area. Any questions on that? Now let's talk a little bit about an if-then statement. An if-else and then if-else-if. If you do show up to my class and you do my assignments, you will receive a... Decent grade. Okay. A. If you... Else... You fail. You fail. Or else if you do part of it, you might get a C. Okay, That's what an if statement is. I, I consider myself the ace professor. I give A, C's, and F's instead of E's. No one laughed. That's sad. Okay. An if is based on a condition in the, out, in the whatever that condition statement arises will give you the results whether you go on or you uh, have a specific statement. Formatting tells you to indent if you're inside that if statement so you can kind of see the nesting of it. Um, and you use angle brackets to surround a description of what will be placed at a particular position. Keyword, angle brackets. 
A condition is a question whose answer is either yes or no. <coughs> so that's why we're going to talk a little bit about flow charts. It's a Boolean statement, exactly. The if is based on a condition, and condition has to be true or false. Yes or no. One or zero. Okay? Depending on if it's true, any subordinate statements after that true would be issued. If not, anything would come out after that statement. Uh, after that last subordinate statement for the true part would be done. Does that make sense? Basically, if it's just the if, it's going to go to the next unindented statement. So let's let's do this as an if example. If an airplane equals y, print beware. The lightning can be closer than you think. The lightning factor, we're setting it to 3.4. So seconds divided by 3.4 will give you your distance. You are so distance away from the kilometer of lightning, right? What happens if you're not in an airplane? The lightning factor is 3. Because we're setting lightning factor up here to 3. The seconds between the... So how many seconds? Are you flying an airplane? If so, then it's a 3.4. Okay? Then you divide it by there and it tells you how, how far the distance is. So, if you can count to three, it's one mile away, right? Right. If you count to six, it's two miles away. But if you count to three, and you're in an airplane, you're a lot closer now, aren't you? So, what will happen is, if you're not in an airplane, it goes right here to distance equal seconds divided by the lightning factor. So, you'll have your seconds and your lightning factor up here. Does that make sense now? Because these indented... Apply only to that if statement. So now let's throw let's throw a little bit more into it. What about an else? What this does is if the condition is false, you can have statements that will be a result of it. Or if it's true, it'll have these statements. So if else the grade is greater than or equal to 60, print pass. Else, print fail. Right? Mm -hmm. Pretty pretty simple concept for an if-then-else. Anyone have any questions on if-then-else? No? Okay. Now, if you're going to do the if-else-if, you can always nest these. All right? So if the first condition is true, do this. Else, if there's a secondary condition, which you're going to do with the flow chart over here, if it... If the temperature is less than 32 degrees, print frigid. Else, if the condition is between here and here, do this. Else, if, until you get it done. <coughs> I'm trying to help you with your assignment here. And then when you get to the last one, else, you don't have to do an if. Just say else. Here you go. Any questions on the if, else, if? Or what we call commonly refer to as else, if. Here's an if, else, if. The grade is greater than a 90, you get an A. Greater than or equal to 80, B. Greater than or equal to 70, C. Greater than or equal to D, F. What's your question? Well, the way if greater than or equal to eighty, uh huh, should not you have a less than sign, less than or equal to? No. From eighty to eighty-nine point nine 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 infinite nines, you'll print B, okay. because you're starting with anything that's equal to gra greater than or equal to ninety. So ninety and above, you're going to get an A. If this condition is not met, then it will be an 80 or greater. But you already know that it's not up here, so it's going to fit into this category. 
if it's an 80 or above, or else it'll be a C, uh, 70 or above, or 60 or above. And if it's not above a 60, then it will do an F. So that's logically correct. Any questions on that? An if statement summary. <clears throat> you use the for first format if you want something to do something or nothing. Use the if else format if you want it to do one thing or another thing. If I wake up, I go to school. Else, I stay home, right? Third format. If I have vanilla ice cream and bananas and some strawberry syrup, some caramel, and some chocolate, I have a banana split. Well, with some whipped cream, nuts, and cherry too, right? I mean, I don't know what everyone likes on their banana splits, but if I don't have any of those ingredients, I can do an else. Else do I have it in stock? If not, go buy it. Does that make sense? You really if you want that banana split. Okay. Alright, let's talk about pseudocode here. Write an algorithm that prints warm if the temperature, whatever temperature being the variable, is above 50 degrees, else it prints cold. What would we write? How would we write it? You wouldn't need another if. if else, uh, pretty cold. Pretty cold. Yeah. That's it. Y'all did it. Great job. Write an algorithm that prints no school if the temperature is below 10 degrees. Print enter temperature colon uh, input. No. Write a pseudocode. Oh. What's my condition statement? You always have to start with a condition statement. Yeah. Yeah. If the temperature is what? Less than or equal to 10, you're going to print no school. It's below 10, so it would be a less than. It wouldn't be less than. Anything. Okay. Fine. Below 10. So it would be less than 10. Hey, I was just trying to give you a fraction of a point in temperature so you didn't have to come to school. Now. Hmm? Give him that one extra degree. Partial degree. Because you can take it down to the infinite point and then just add that point whatever zero, 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 one, and then you're at the next degree and now you have to have school <laughs> I'm sorry but if it gets 9 or 10 degrees it's going to fluctuate depending on where the wind is changing so I cancel school anyway anyway <laughs> write an algorithm that prints too cold if the temperature is below 50 okay if it's between 50 and 90 and too hot if it's above 90 How would you do it? If, uh, if less than 50 degrees, print uh, too cold. Else if greater than 90 degrees, print too hot. Else, is that okay? Is that okay? <laughs> mm-hmm. You could do it that way. Or you could say, uh, on the else if, the temperature is between 50 and 90. 50 and then uh, temperature is greater than 50 with two pipes, meaning or uh, less than 90. Print OK, else print too hot. There's a lot of ways you can do it. Okay? We did that. Now let's let's talk about a flowchart. Flowchart symbols are pretty pretty uh, interesting. All it is is a pictorial representation of the program logic or the pseudocode. That's all it is. You will need to know this when you start doing databasing because you're going to be doing a lot of flowcharting in there, a lot of pseudocode. For a rectangle, those are going to be print statements, input statements, assignment statements with rectangle. If you have a question, you're doing the loop, 
or you're doing ifs, condition statements will be in a diamond. You'll connect those rectangles and diamonds in the direction of the logical flow with the arrow. Okay? Every flow chart is to have one starting point and one ending point. Don't forget to connect the bottom components of your flow charts. Now notice how I have this over here. Why do I have four different ending points? Because they all end after that statement has been printed. They're all different conditions. So each of my conditions, I will accept this flow chart. Because logically, it makes sense. Once you print out this statement, you're stopping. And I'm not very good at writing an octal sign, so or stop sign. So you could do it this way with this, print it here, and then have the end. Or you come over here, no, and then just keep coming down. And what I could have done is printed it and then come down here to this one. Uh, basically the same thing. Does it make sense? Let me draw in a different color here what I'm talking about. Is after you come out of these, just like that. Does that make sense? So you actually have a one in, but I will accept it if you can end it at each side. Yes? I use Visio. Mm -hmm. Is it okay if I use the Visio components? You can use the Visio components. However, they need to be in the rectangle or the diamond. In their, they're fairly closely aligned. Um, but what you'll need to do on that is uh, make sure you copy your Visio drawing out and put it in Word. And then I'll accept it in Word or in PowerPoint only. For your assignment, you'll have two components. You're going to have your pseudocode and then you'll have your flowchart. So you're going to do both of those on the same document. So you can create your flowchart in Visio and then copy it in. You can do it in Paint and copy it in. Or you can spend your infinite amount of time and do it in Word. I'll leave it up to you. So do you want the octagon sign? No. Uh, it'll be just an arrow down at the bottom. That's the typical one. I just put an octagon sign so you know that that's a stop. Okay. But if you, if you find a stop sign, just download the image from Google of a stop sign. And just put it out there on these. That'll be fine too. Okay. That that identifies that that statement has stopped. There's it can't go any further. Now, if you decide to come out, out of your decision and, and drop it down to this bottom one, so you only have the one stop sign, that's fine too. I'll accept either way. Okay. Let's talk about a flow chart that prints too cold if the temperature is below 50. What will we do? Well, we're going to do our start with an oval, thanks to Vernon, or to Mr. Lee, I should say. We're going to come down to our first condition statement, which will be in a rectangle. If temperature is less than 50, and then we'll look at our diamond, right? Is the temperature less than 50? No. Then you'll come down to the next decision. Is it between 50 and 90? No. It comes down, then it will go ahead and print too hot at that point. And then after that, it's done. But if it's in between these, it'll come out of here and say, if yes, it was, okay, print okay, and then done. Does that make sense? We have a flow control, okay? Now, This particular slide will be very of importance to you when it comes to your quiz. Flow control. Sequential statements are ones that are executed one step at a time in order. Pretty simple, right? Anyone disagree with the sequential statement? Branching statements. Those are, are your if statements that can have more than one option or condition applied to that specific statement. We call those branching statements um, or conditional statements. I'll accept either or. Branch, branching, or conditional statements for this one. Loop statement. Or, it causes you to jump back to a previously executed statement 
as long as you have not met the condition. Now I'll get to the while loop here in, in a few minutes. There's two different ways to do a while loop. And when we start talking about a for loop for incremental uh, loops. Okay? I'm not going to worry about the flow chart. Now let's talk about the while loop. While a certain condition is true, you will do this loop. Okay? So if this condition ever becomes false, that's when that while loop is done. While x is less than 10, and inside of here you better have your increment for x. Otherwise you have what? Infinite, loop. Infinite loops. You have to close your okay. Once it becomes false, the while loop then jumps to the next line after that loop. Pretty simple. Loop iteration, like I said, you're gonna count, you can count to a specific number. While the count is less than or equal to five, print happy birthday. You're gonna increment count by one. So if we start out, at, if count starts at one, count is one, that's less than or equal to five, we'll print happy birthday, we'll add one, so now we're at two, right? We printed it once, now we're at two. Count is less than five, go in, print it again, now we're at three, four, five, then we run it again for the fifth time, so it will print five, right? <coughs> that is correct. Um... What is tracing? Anyone know what tracing is? Tracing is following the code step by step and out in writing out the output of what each line does. So if you say C equals three, you'll have a column for all your variables. And so in the line number, line number six, C equals three, you put three underneath the C in the sixth area. Okay? So you're following the flow of what where the variables are in, in what process. Does that make sense? Pseudocode summary, basically we're doing all these. Uh, now we have what we call a do while loop. What's the difference between a while do or a while loop and a do while loop? Anyone know? Um, uh, the do while will do it, it will always do it once before it starts to do it. A do while will always do it first because it has to go through that code while this before it even meets the condition. So it will go through that loop at least once is compared to a while loop which has the condition at the top if it doesn't meet the condition it skips the loop is there any questions on that loop termination there are three ways you can terminate it you can have a counter loop like we just did set a variable equal to a, a number and increment that number each time it's in the loop once it gets to a certain number it ends the loop okay the user query, you can always ask the user, do they want to continue, yes or no? Depending on their answer, will depend on whether the loop continues or not. And a sentinel, a sentinel value is a uh, special value to indicate that there's no more input. Um, basically, after the 10th frame for bowling, right? You can't add any more points. You also, here's how you do it, so long as the condition's Y, It'll keep doing this. Continue. No. Up. Oh, it's no. We can skip and go on. Make sense? Signal value. Um, is the bowling score system robust? Division by zero would actually be a computation or cause a crash if you divide something by zero. So you don't want to do that. And nested loop is a loop that's inside of another loop. While x is greater than 10. Okay, how many of you think of an Excel spreadsheet where you have multiple columns and multiple rows, right? If I do inside of my first area, I'm creating my <coughs> columns. So 4 equals x, y, z, right? For i is less than 2, i plus plus. And then underneath that, for x equals 2, x plus plus. What I'm going to do is I'm going to print out my first row in column A. It'll, it'll print it out, increment. Now I'll print out row 2. Then that loop is finished. So it goes up. And now I can iterate the, the top loop, which moves it over 1. So now I'm in the second column, 
and I print row one and row two. Or I could do it vice versa between the row and the columns. Okay, depending on how you set it up and what you're printing. Here's a nested loop example. While number is greater than or less than or equal to zero, count is going to be two. Prime is yes. And then here you have another while loop that's inside of it. Then you have an if statement to bring you back out. Okay. Ready? I love it when they do this backwards. There are three basic forms of the if statement. Which of the following is not one of these forms? If not. If not. In a flow chart, the diamond symbol is what? It sounds a. Who said no? So it's not possible for a while loop to have zero iterations? It is possible because if, if you your condition is false, it's going to skip it. Now the do while loop, that would be the correct answer for a do while. You have to have that one iteration. So I can see where you, because it's not specifying, but they can call them two different things. They say a do while or just a while loop, just, just not to confuse you. A signal value is used to? Very good. Is there any questions on that? Go ahead and turn on the lights.